Over 7,000 home ownership scheme units on offer later this year. Foreign Minister Wang Yi meets White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan in Beijing. Hello and welcome to TVB News. The Housing Authority's subsidized housing committee has decided on the pricing and arrangements for a new series of housing units under the home ownership scheme. Prices of the newest batch of flats will not fall despite the decline of the property market, with the discount rate decreasing from 38 percent of the market price to 30 percent. This, as families with newborn babies and elderly people are given priority in choosing their preferred flats. Timothy Lee tells us more. More than 7,000 units at five housing estates will be on offer in the newest batch of flats available under the Home Ownership Scheme, or HOS. Three of the housing estates are located in urban areas. They include a Kaitak project located next to the Songwon Toy MTR station, which offers about 1,700 units with floor areas ranging from 186 to 450 square feet. Another 420 units will be available at this Kuntan project, with sizes ranging from 290 to 500 square feet. In Yaotong, residents could purchase units of between 380 and 470 square feet at this project. The other newly available flats are located in Tongchong and Tunmun. Some residents voice their views on the latest batch of units. This man said he would prefer a home closer to his workplace in Kai Tak, but noted that it will be more expensive. While this man said it is not the right time to make such a big investment, when salaries in the city remain unstable. Despite a dip in property prices in the city, prices remain unchanged among HOS units, with the discount rate for such flats decreasing from 38 percent of the market price to 30 percent. Among the latest batch of units, the most expensive flats are located in Kai Tak, with the average price of $9,230 per square foot. The Housing Authority Subsidized Housing Committee Chairwoman Clarissa Wong said units available this year exceed those of previous years. Meanwhile, around 40 percent of the latest batch of flats will be for the first time prioritized applicants with newborn babies and elderly relatives, in accordance with the chief executive's policy address. The housing units are expected to be open for applications in the fourth quarter of this year. Timothy Lee, TVB News. A nine-member jury began deliberations on the case involving the Dragon Slaying Brigade Bomb Squad. The seven defendants were charged with conspiracy to commit bombing. They allegedly came up with a plot to plant two bombs in Wan Chai in December 2019. It was thwarted. High Court Judge Juliana Barnes explained the criminal elements of the charges. She said if the jury believes brigade leaders Wang Chun Kung and Pang Quan Ho's testimony about the planting of the bombs, the jury will admit the fact that the devices could be detonated. In another legal direction on the idea of conspiracy, the judge said spoken agreements or actions can constitute conspiracy. The jurors have to prove that there were intentions to lead to death. But if there is uncertainty in one of the key elements, they should rule that the charge does not stand. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan had arrived in Beijing today to begin a three-day visit to China. Sullivan held talks with Foreign Minister Wang Yi this afternoon and will meet other high-ranking Chinese officials as the U.S. and China bid and try and manage their strained diplomatic ties. Daniel Rao tells us more. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan arrived in China today for talks on a relationship that has been severely tested during U.S. President Joe Biden's term in office. Sullivan was greeted at a Beijing airport by Yang Tao, the Chinese Foreign Ministry's chief of the North American and Oceanian Department, and U.S. Ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns. Sullivan later met first with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi at a lush resort on the northern outskirts of Beijing. They shook hands in front of Chinese and American flags set before an artistic depiction of the Chinese landscape. Addressing a crowd of journalists, Wang described China-U.S. ties as critical with a bearing on the world and which have taken twists and turns. 
Wang added that he hopes relations between the two countries will move to a condition of stable, healthy and sustainable development. Sullivan said both would talk about areas of agreement and disagreement that need to be managed effectively and substantively. President Biden has been very clear in his conversations with President Xi that he is committed to managing this important relationship responsibly. And the outcomes of the Woodside Summit and the work we have done since then demonstrate that. That we are working to ensure that competition does not bear into conflict, and that we find ways to work together where our interests align. Wang and Sullivan then proceeded into a closed-door meeting. No major announcements are expected following the three days of talks. However, Sullivan's meetings could lay the groundwork for a possible final summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping before U.S. President Joe Biden steps down in January. The Biden administration has taken a tough line on China, viewing it as a strategic competitor, restricting the access of its companies to advanced technology and confronting Beijing over issues such as Taiwan and the South China Sea. At a meeting between Sullivan and Wang in Vienna in May 2023, the two countries launched a delicate process of putting relations back on track. Since then, they have met two more times in a third country, Malta and Thailand. This week will mark their first talks in Beijing. Danaral TV News. In the city's latest reindustrialization effort, a nanotechnology production plant opened in Hong Kong. It sets sights not just on medical and textile goods, but also on Hong Kong-made aerospace material. Jackie Lin took a look at the production line. Cheers! Reviving the Made in Hong Kong concept as this nanofiber production center of nano shields kicked into gear in Cheng Kuan today. Secretary for Innovation, Technology and Industry Sun Dong said the endeavor showcased a brand new reindustrialization model of Hong Kong. That is to turn frontier research work right into production locally before companies scale up manufacturing in Greater Bay Area factories. Overall, the government will earmark $10 billion for accelerating advanced manufacturing of strategic industries, including life science and AI. Nano Shoots was awarded $15 million under the government's reindustrialization funding scheme. With an annual output of 10 tons, the Hong Kong made nanofiber material is light, flexible, and breathable and can be made into high caliber filter, medical, beauty, and garment products. But pivoting to manufacture locally was not easy. It's a huge challenge there, huge. Nanotechnology is a very sensitive material, very sensitive. No matter one degree of temperature change or even 0.1 percent of the moisture change, that will impact and damage the material. Certainly, I mean, the uh, geopolitical tension has effect. But because of that, we need to invest more in technology and innovation and drive the economy forward in a different Know, along a different path, instead of only relying on financial services trading. Nanoshoes partnering Czechia-based company noted Hong Kong's potential. Development with all the background of the universities in Hong Kong, I believe like there is a huge potential. Research partnership is also underway with former HKUST president Professor Wei Shi on manufacturing aerospace-related material in Hong Kong. The bulk of the manufacturing process here is automated, including scanning and spinning. So all four production lines here only require six engineers to monitor and manage every day, cutting the manpower cost by almost half. Jackie Lin, TVB News. The University of Hong Kong's Faculty of Medicine has introduced high-focus ultrasound treatment for liver cancer. Some patients will not have to stay overnight in hospital after tumor removal procedures. The minimally invasive procedure is called histotropsy treatment. Under the sponsorship of Li Ka Shing Foundation, the devices purchased from the U.S. can create ultrasound that breaks down cancer cells in a liquefaction process without leaving any scars or wounds. Each treatment costs around 63,000 Hong Kong dollars. The process takes 10 minutes each time, treating tumors no larger than 5 centimeters in size. The Cushing Foundation also subsidizes six doctors and radi radiologists from Queen Mary Hospital to be trained in the U.S. 
as well as 10 liver cancer patients to undergo clinical trial with the device. Hong Kong U hopes the service can be extended to more patients at public hospitals. The Chinese University's Faculty of Medicine will receive another histotripsy device at the end of this year. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.